You know celebration time is time of giving. And it is in the theme of the Bible. In Luke chapter 15, there has many, it, is, it has got many people who had lost something. Somebody lost a son. Somebody lost a coin. The other one lost what? Huh? Uh, whatever it is, they lost. The Bible says each one of them, when they found it, they called their neighbors. So celebration time is time of giving. You give praise. You give thanks. You give gifts. You give the good news. You know, people when they fight celebrate, they will ask you, why are you so happy? You tell them, this son of mine was lost, but now he is home. I'm so grateful. It's like you are celebrating so that they may ask you why you are happy. Celebration is a way of us telling people, ask me why I'm happy. Ask me why I'm happy. Do you want to know why I'm happy? Now me. Because I'm 40. <laughs> and that's not the end. Imagine here, none of you was there at 40. The closest was Nyambura, who was two months less her age, okay? 40, here. Now, they are there who are there that first day, but they are not at Shiloh this morning. But you know what? You are here. Never mind when you came. But you are part of this family. You are one of us. Therefore, you are 40. You will still help us celebrate Jesus. <laughs> Amen. So we better not just say we are in the celebration mood. You better act like it. And behave like it. So this season, Road to 40, is a time of thanks thanksgiving. It's a time of praising. It's a time of giving worship to God. It's a time of giving gifts to our neighbors. And telling them, I am so blessed. I have got two packets of unga I can share with you. I am so happy that I can I get to be the one sharing. So you better have that mindset. That this is a, a season of giving ourselves to God. And giving our gifts to other people. Telling them that we are so blessed. I'm so happy to be here this morning. At the onset, on, on the onset of the road to 40. To share with this family of mine, hallelujah, who would have said, who would have said 40 years ago, that a years like this one, I have so many daughters and sons, so many brothers and sisters, only God. And let me tell you, let me surprise you, who can tell what God has in store for you? I just said, who can tell what God has for you? The good thing is in God, things can only be better. You better celebrate in advance. I will love, may the Lord keep me wrong, to see your new revised version. Amen. I see you in the future. You look better. You look greater. You look brighter. You look wealthier. You look happier. I'm talking about you. You better celebrate in advance because that is you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Celebrating Jesus for who you are and whom we are becoming. I just love it. You will become better. Amen. So this morning, we are sharing. Uh, you know, we have had a series and we have been talking about the disciplines of Christian living. And today we are winding up the, the, the season. And I'm so blessed to be the one to wind it up. Hallelujah. So today we are talking about stewardship. Stewardship. And maybe you're asking, what does stewardship mean? Simply said, stewardship means that someone trusts you enough and gives you his property to manage for him or her. Somebody trusts you and he gives you his property to manage for him. Okay? But I want you to hear the second part. Because he's the owner, you are not. If you are a neighbor... To do a good job, he can sack you. If you are given an assignment or you are given something and you are not able, the owner can take it back and give it to somebody else. So stewardship. Somebody trusts you so much that he gives you his property to manage for them. Said in another way, in other, in other words, stewardship is managing God's blessings Go in God's way and for God's glory. I said, 
Managing God's blessings. Are you blessed? You are managing God's blessings. You are supposed to manage them God's way. And you're supposed to manage them for his glory. Managing resources. God's resources has given us. In other words, you are managing them as you pursue God's purposes. It is not for you because you are just given on behalf. Okay? So you have to align and keep to your mandate and keep to your lane as you manage God's resources. In other words, we are meant to manage these resources entrusted to us within the delegated authority. 1 Corinthians 4, 1 to 2. 1 Corinthians 4, 1 to 2. And because it's early in the morning, I want you to help me read. Shall we read together? And lead with an attitude like people in a celebration mode are. Let's read together. Read to understand. Read to interact. Read to encounter the word. Okay? Let's go. Let's go. So we are stewards of God's mistress, but he has an expectation. There is a requirement that we be found faithful in managing those resources, which we are going to try and look at very soon. In other words, stewardship has been a theme from the times of Adam at the garden. The fall of man has everything to do with stewardship. The Bible says that God created everything. Then he brought it to Adam and he started delegating to him responsibility. For example, in, two, in chap, um, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 19, the Bible says that God will create and then he would bring it to Adam and tell him to name them. Name the animals. Delegated authority. He didn't create, but he named. So he was told to chew the rod to replenish, and then take dominion. Those were the instructions. Those were the boundaries. But then a time came when he decided to overstep the boundaries. The issue of faithfulness now again came in. And let me tell you, when he overstepped his boundaries, it was so sad, he was shown the door. And I'm here that we remind ourselves, the resources that God has given you, immediately you start overstepping, starting to do what you are not asked to do. You better know, we were going this way, you have engaged a reverse gear, you are very busy going backwards. The day you start thinking that you can do things your way, you better know you have started engaging the reverse gear. Man lost his dominion at the Garden of Eden. Because he was not able to be a, be, continue being a good steward. When we mismanage God's resources, we start losing the opportunities and benefits attached to the resources. And we can see it in the, at the Garden of Eden. That's what happened. Ultimately happened. Do you know this morning, the people I'm talking to and those maybe who could be listening online, there could be some people here. God has endowed you with so many resources. You are doing so well. Then all of a sudden, you started imagining you are the owner and not the steward. So you have started mismanaging it. Unfortunately, you have started going back. And very soon, unless you change your ways, you might lose it. And sometimes with God, you can lose it all. It can be instant or it can be gradual. Meaning, it's a very serious affair, managing God's resources. And we have seen people, even in the, in, in the government, when people are told that they have mismanaged or misused or abused their possessions, they are shown the door. Have you ever seen? Does your TV ever, has it ever shown you something like that? Somebody who was sacked. 
and then you are told they were sacked because they, they, they are, instead they are taken to court to go and show where they took billions or millions. The principle applies to all of us. You may not be in parliament. You may not be the MD of a parastato, but you are in charge of some resources that God has given you. Not managing them well. You can be taught to sit while others work. And we have seen it. And it is a very sad affair when you lose what you used to enjoy. So, moreover, it is called for you and me to be good stewards. Matthew chapter 25, verse 21. It is the story of the talents. The Lord entrusted some, tre some talents to three people. And the Bible says very clearly, each one of them according to their ability. But when, towards the end when the owner came, because they were not the owner, they were only stewards, this is what happened. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you lure over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. When you manage God's resources well, you stand a chance or you qualify to be entrusted with more. Could it be you are not growing? You have stagnated because you are using God's resources at your own terms. God expects you to do it according to his delegated authority. Growing it. He wants you to involve him and grow that which he has given you. So, let me talk about four pillars of stewardship. Four pillars. Everything that we will say this morning will be contained within these, these uh, four pillars. Number one, God created everything. He made it all. Pillar number two, God owns it all. Because he made it, he owns it. That dress of yours which you bought, you own it, it is yours. True or true? If I'm the one who bought it, then it is mine. So if God made it, it is his. But I loved Deuteronomy 10.14. Let's read it in Amplified Version Classic. Let's read together. Behold, the heavens and the highest of heavens belong to the Lord your God. The earth and that is in it. In other words, the heavens and the highest, the earth, are you on earth? Hey, and then whatever is in it, the Lord created it. We all fit in there. Just in case you didn't hear that, Psalms 89 verse 11. Psalms 89 verse 11. Let's read together. The heavens are yours, and yours also the earth. You founded the world, and all that is in it. Are you on earth? All that is in it, including you and me. We belong to him. But I'm glad I belong. He's a good, good father. Psalms 24, verse 1 and 2. I'm still bidding on those two principles. He made it and he owns it. Let's go together. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it the world, and all who live in it. Where do you live? Tell your neighbor where you live. Oh, you said Kiamobi. See, Kiamobi is in, in this world, in, on the earth. Oh, you said Kahazukari. I got you. Yeah. You belong to him. Hallelujah. The earth and everything. Hey, maybe some of you are saying, okay, nimekubali, lakini, Psalms 50 verse 10 and 11. Let's go together. For every animal of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird in the mountains, and the insects in the field are mine. Hey, including the insects, and the birds, and the mountains, 
And you, you belong to the same father. But it's a privilege to belong to him. Amen. Maybe you are saying, oh, yes, he, everything else belongs to him. Haggai chapter 2, verse 8. Haggai chapter 2, verse 8. Okay, let me read it. The silver, let's go together. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. That money which is in your pocket, tell your neighbor it's not yours. It belongs to my father. And he expects you to help me when I don't have. <laughs> That's why he has given you, yes. We belong to him. Now can you imagine the parents in the house, you have got three children like me, and one is, the two are eating and one is not eating. Error. Error, that there's somebody who sleeps hungry and you have several packets of uga in their house. That's an error. It's against the principles of God. And no wonder this season, you hear a lot about giving back to the community, going back and telling them we are so blessed for 40 years. We just want to share with you. And we look around. We don't go to give those who have, go, who have bought in bundles. We will go to the people who are appreciated. Did you know if we rent a card here, nobody will appreciate it? Why? Because there are rights all over. But try and write a card in a dark room. Everybody will appreciate the right of the candle. So we will go and reach out to those who appreciate what we are doing to them. I pray that you'll be part of it. You will not complain because you are my brother, you are my sister, you are their brother, you are their sister. You belong to the same father. He expects you to be a good steward of all the things that he has given you. Peter number three, he delegated everything. So we have had, we know God lives in heaven. And there's a verse that says, he, and the earth he has given to the sons of men. Yeah, naishi huko, si tumepatiwa hapa. Hallelujah. Lakini mutawale vizuri. When we were growing up, my mother would leave us and give some duties. You, you will sweep. I don't know you. You will go to the river how many times? Hallelujah, that is me. And then when we are left, because we used to be like a crowd in the house, we were so many, we forget. We imagine my mother would take so long. We start praying in the compound. We have not yet done what we asked to do. And then we realize darkness is coming. We have not yet gone to the river. Then as you are coming from the river, you found he has, she has already come. And she's wondering where I have been. you have been since morning or since the time she left. And you know the, next of, the rest of the story. <laughs> or I can allow you to imagine what happened. And this happens when you don't operate in the things of the kingdom according to the delegated authority. Because God has delegated everything. Everything I have today comes from God. It is his. I am not the owner of the things in my life. And as a steward, I am Mary, the manager. If I believe that I am the owner, then I'm constantly going to be in conflict with God over what I do with the things that I have. But when I understand that the Lord is the owner and I'm only the steward, conflict disappears and freedom overtakes my life. Adam was given so much, but he crossed the boundaries. He forgot he would have to give an account to the owner. And we see it in the book of Genesis when God showed up he started by calling Adam, Adam, where are you? When he showed up, he said, I'm hiding. He was like, why are you hiding? Because I'm naked. Who told you you are naked? Let me tell you, what God has given you, a day is coming. And he'll come to ask you to account for it. I pray that your books of account are okay. Luke 16, verse 1 and 2. Jesus told his disciples, there was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management because you cannot be a manager any longer. Hey, I pray you will not hear those statements. When God comes to ask you and ask you, what are you doing? You cannot continue to be leading this group because you are so irresponsible. You are never found there. You never show up. You never give direction. I told you this is how I want you to do it. What is this that I am hearing? Let me tell you, he delegated everything. And God delegated it to your pastors. God delegated it to your leaders. Leaders of your 
small men's group, leaders to your coordinators. God speaks through them, delegated authority. And let me tell you, I pray, you will not be like that man who, who was asked, what is this that I am hearing you? And some of us, when you are asked, what, that, what is this that I am hearing you? You get annoyed. Whom does she think she is? Whom does he think he is? Hey, he is under instructions. Because God delegated to the human. That shall not be you. When God gives you an assignment, you better do it well. Because he will come and tell you, we are better off without you. That shall not be you. Not when we are celebrating 40. We will stay up because we know we are stewards. And it can be given to somebody else. God sucks people from power, possessions, and responsibilities. If they do not utilize the resources he has given them for his glory and advancement of his purposes. Luke chapter 12, verse 16 to 21. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, I was so mesmerized and I want you to read it with a keen eye. You will see the many eyes in, those, in that story. He was just talking about himself. He forgot he was the steward, not the owner. Now all of a sudden, he is rich. Let's read verse 17 so that you may internalize. And I want you to note every eye or every mind. The day you find wherever you are talking, you want to talk about me, myself, and I, you better watch out. Let's read. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my groups. Then he said, this is what I will do. I will tear down my bands and build bigger ones and there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Brethren, I'm here to submit to us that God has blessed you. Never mind at what time you entered this IKZ family. God has blessed you. You are not where you are five years ago. You cannot afford now starting building your own kingdom. That I'm now, I'm so blessed. I was promoted the other day. Now I have no time for fellowship. I have no time for prayer. I have no time for this. This is what I'll do. You know it is time for personal development. Excuse me. You might be asked like that man. You fool. Let me tell you if God because you are fool, you must be a real fool. That shall not be you in the name of Jesus. We are going to stand up. Better everybody calls you a fool, but not God. Hallelujah. So, watch out what you are telling yourself. He didn't talk to himself, and he told himself what you'll do. And then <laughs> the time came. This man forgot he was not the owner, but just a steward. And I want you to hear what I have to say next. Since we cannot carry anything with us when we die. Did you hear what I said? Since we cannot carry anything with us when we die. Sharing is the way of carrying things with us to the next world. That you can do good to the human, to the community, until when, they, when you die, they can mourn you. I'm reminded of this man, the man with authority in the Bible, who, whose, whose servant was about to die. And he sent for Jesus, if you can heal my servant. And let me he sent the, the Jews' elders. These people went and told Jesus, this man is a good man. He even built a synagogue for us. You better heal his son. When you share with others, they even be, at some point they become prayer partners. You can leave them and they can carry forward. You have a godly legacy. Giving is creating for yourself an account in heaven. I pray that this season you look for every opportunity and say, I cannot afford not to have an account in heaven. And the account 
The currency there are the good works. The, good, the Bible says in the, good of, in, the, in the book of Revelation that these things, these good works shall follow us. I pray, I want you to look behind you. Look behind you. Just look behind you. As you see, because you are the only one, I hope you can see some good deeds which can follow you if today was your last day. I got you. <laughs> You know, some of us who are looking for something, Cooper, what you are looking is inside you. Hey, it's about reflections. That when a day goes and you have not deposited in other people, it's a lost opportunity. Because that is what you have to leave you. So, this season, Road to 40, we will be giving the gospel. You say you are a believer. Very soon we have a campaign we are calling tell, tell them campaign. Seriously? And you have Jesus in your heart? Even this one you want to sign out? And imagine we want to make it as local as possible. You shall do it in your zone. Do you live somewhere? We shall do it where you live. So that you don't say I have no means of transport. So that you may not say it is how shall I go home? We want to go there. You have to give it out. And let me tell you, when you give Jesus, people Jesus, Jesus becomes everything. We will give them Jesus. We will give them food. We will go and bless them. And then God will give him praise. We will give him thanks. We will give him worship. And when we give him worship, he comes. He relocates and comes and dwells around where he is worshipped. Five resources that all of us have. Five resources. Very quickly. All of us. Maybe you are wondering. No, I'm not even that rich. Let me tell you, all of us here are very rich. Hallelujah. There are five resources all of us have, and you'll be expected to give an account. Resource number one. You are te the temple. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17, Don't you know yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred, and you together are that temple. Tell yourself, I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. Take care of God's temple. You are only a steward. Feed it well. Give it good medical care. Do exercise. Treat it well that it can serve you well to serve your purposes. Do not feed it with the long things, alcohol, drugs, whatever it is. We have seen people who have mismanaged their temples. By the time the, if the bodies are reacting, you take them to tell them he has smoked so much. His, his lungs or her lungs are finished on one side. That shall not be you. You better know that God has an expectation. Because this good news, they are good but they must be carried by a temple. Tell your neighbor the good news are carried by a temple. Yeah. Hey, and I am the temple. This good news, if we keep, it, keep them here, this Bible, we keep it here, it will go nowhere. You have to carry it. You are the temple. That is a resource that God expects you to take good care. The next resource is called time. Time. Ephesians 5, 7, 5, 15 to 17. Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. Pay attention. And I want you to mark the word attention. Then to how you walk. Not as unwise people, but as wise. Making the most of the time. Because the days are evil. So don't be foolish. But understand the Lord's will understand what the Lord's will is. That is Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. You can project it for us. Reading is hearing it twice. You hear it when I said, and then you... Again, uh, let's see verse 16. Or is it verse 17? <laughs> let's read verse, verse 16. Make, let's read together. Make the most of every opportunity... Uh -huh. There is a version that is saying, um, don't act foolishly. 
So don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. We will be held accountable for how we used each day that the Lord has made. So invest the time. Don't waste it. At home, you'll go and read Ecclesiastes 12, 1 to 7, but I'll read only verse 1. Ecclesiastes 12, 1 to 7, but I'll read it at home. It says, remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pressure in them. There is time for everything. Serve God when you can. Come for fellowship when you can. I can tell you, talk to the young mothers. Even if you pleaded with them, they can't make it for a Bible study. Even for prayer. Those who got a baby last week. You better seize the opportunity. Hallelujah. And I'm not cutting anybody. I am just saying, just walk in your season. Because a day is coming when you say, I would really love to go. But I cannot. You better take advantage of this season now. That time may be too late. Resource number three, talent. Everyone has been given some talents, skills, abilities, calling, anointing. Seek and purpose to know what God has given you, which talent God has given you. Develop it and use it for his glory and advancement of his kingdom. He expects you and me to take these gifts and abilities that he has hardened us and used them for his glory. So we all have talents, different, so that we may complement each other. Don't worry if there are many things you see other people doing, like the worship team here, they were singing so nicely, jumping up, and then you, you can't even get to the ground. The farthest you are going is like this. Hallelujah, it is okay. For now, they need somebody else who is just swinging. No worries. <laughs> but do the best you can for the kingdom to the glory of God. Hallelujah. The fourth resource is treasure treasure, finances, and material possessions. God has given us finances, God has given material possessions, and God has an expectation. And he's coming for an account from you. So what is expected of you? Give abundantly and cheerfully. No coercion. Just give. Because remember what we read, who much is given, much is expected. That's why we don't, we don't have necessarily have to say, all of you, you'll give an offering. Give according to your ability. I love the story in the book of 1 Chronicles 29, 14 to 18. And I would want us to, to, to read that, that one. 1 Chronicles 29, 14 to 18 in NIV. 1 Chronicles 29, 14 to 18 in NIV. This is David after they were giving uh, money to build the temple. And here, David, let's read together. But who am I? And who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? I pray that shall be the story of DCIKZ. That shall be the story of Shiloh Worship Center. That we should be able to give as generously as this. Everything comes from you. And we have given you only what comes from your hand. Next. We are foreigners and strangers in your sight, as were all our ancestors. Our days on earth are like shadow without hope. Lord, our God, all this abundance that we have provided for building you a temple for your holy name comes from your hand and all of it belongs to you. I know, my God, that you test the heart and are priest with integrity. All these things I have given willingly and with honest intent. And now I have seen with joy how willingly your people who are here have given to you. Shiloh Worship Center, we shall give generously. We shall give willingly. Tell your neighbor, we shall give generously. We shall give abundantly. We shall give cheerfully. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. I pray that we can have such a testimony. It is not coercing. Do you know they gave until they were told stop? Hallelujah. Amen. We may not be there, but we are getting there. 
Why do you know why I am saying that? We are not where we are. Ah. I remember the other day. We would cook mandazi up to 3 a.m. in the morning so that we can sell tomorrow morning when you go to church and we are still the buyers. We sell to the small congregation. The mandazis don't get finished. And now then, she already will carry them with a bag and go door to door in Zimmerman's. I know, Mama Kakuju. By the way, I had not seen it. That one was there 40 years ago. Let's appreciate Ruth. These days, instead of cooking mandazi throughout the night of Saturday, we cook them to come and bless the servants of God who are serving that day. Come on, celebrate Jesus. We have a reason to be grateful. We are not where we are. And, but we are not yet where we want to be. You better have a big vision because we are going there. Hallelujah. Yes. And Ruth was very instrumental. That time she used to work for Farmer's Choice. So her contribution, you, you know such as I give, I give to you. She used to buy for us sausages and those other things at the staff price. Then she would bring to us, we cook, and sell to the, our small congregation in the market price. <laughs> and then the ladies had something to give to buy the protein Zimmerman. That time we were doing that, with the, we were in the Matope church. Hallelujah. We may not be where we want to go. We may not be at our cathedral at Shiloh. But God being whom he is. And we have seen him. If you are not there, you have heard about what he has done. And I have heard he can do it again. And you'll be part of the doing because you become a good steward of the resources that God has given you. He's giving each one of us an opportunity to be the difference to the glory of his name. So, a few things about stewardships. Number one, remember, don't forget you are not your own. Number two, you came with nothing. Everything that you have, including the clothes you are wearing right now, you have acquired it here. Actually, Job said, naked I came, naked I will go. Tell yourself, naked I came. And you may not go naked when we are burying people, we don't bury them naked. But I can assure you, even if we bury you with a suit, very soon the termites will have done a good justice. So naked you'll go. No wonder the, the pastor says, dust to dust, ash to ash. Naked we came. Don't forget. You may look so nice, but naked you came. You came with nothing. Number three, everything you have, you have received. Everything you have, you have received. And in the book of Corinthians, Paul was so mad with the Corinthians. And in 1 Corinthians 4, 7, this is what he said. For who makes you different from anyone else? Ah, let's read together. Let's read together. For who makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not? Hey, you should read it in another version I had. For who makes you so superior? What do you have that you didn't receive? In fact, you did receive it. Why do you boast as if you didn't receive it? It is a privilege to have everything that you have. Everything you have, you received. Deuteronomy 8, 17 to 18 in, in the message version um, I'm still building up on that, that everything that you have, you received. Let's read together. If you start thinking to yourselves, I did all this, and all by myself, I am rich, it is mine. Continue. Well, think again. Remember that God, your God, gave you the strength to produce all this wealth so as to confirm the covenant that he promised to your ancestors as it is today. Hallelujah. So, what is it that you have that you didn't receive? And then the Bible asks you, why are you so proud about it? That now, at West Kuongea, at Kwasababu Linunua Gari, 
na nikupewa ulipewa tunakujua ukizaliwa haukukuja na gari haleluya that one should humble you that god you have found favor in the sight of god and he has given you it should humble you what you have and like david ask what did i do to deserve all this I am not different. That one look seems to work so hard, but you are blessed. So when God makes you rich, he wants you to be a blessing. Remember, you are blessed to be a blessing. I came across this one. I thought it was funny. For every rich person here, and all of us, we have discovered we are rich in our own standards. Eh? God will bring a Lazarus next to you. How you treat that Lazarus, God is very keen to see. You remember the story of the rich man and Lazarus? God is looking for, I am following you closely. That man there who has not eaten for days and you, you have been provided for and you cannot stretch out your hand. You have been blessed to be a blessing. And Lazarus is right next to where you live. Right next to where you work. You better watch out. They determine how God looks at it. Something else about stewardship. Until you give yourself to the Lord, you cannot give your services and goods. Because it will hurt you, you will not, you will feel like it's such. Wanauliza pesa mingi, kani kai kanisa ni kutoa kutoa. Na wewe si umepatiwa nyingi sana di unambiwa utoe. Hallelujah. Hey, give yourself, give your money, give your services, give your testimony. Tell, tell them life is about giving. Given to give, to give others. Pass it on to others. Because remember where we read, in stewardship, you must prove yourself faithful. God gives us according to our abilities. He gives us what we can manage. But he wants faithfulness in what he has given you, and he wants competence and growth. He wants you to grow that which he has given you. Put effort and remain accountable to those who have given you the assignment. The fact that God has given you retro doesn't mean you remain there. He wants effort. He wants you to grow it. Develop it until it grew, whatever the eight is. And finally, the owner is gone, but he can come back any time. He expects us to increase everything he has entrusted to us. Failure to do this will be met with discipline or even the loss of the resources. But God is so kind. The Bible talks about a, a story of a tree which had not borne fruit. And the owner wanted to cut it. But the gardener pleaded and said, give us more time. It will come up. The Lord is giving you and me more time that we may grow. There is time to salvage that which is left, to change our attitude, and know we are not the owners, and know we are just stewards. We are just custodians. A bank manager is not the bank owner. He serves, and when his time of retirement comes, he is told, he's given a letter. Actually, it's not verbal. You are given a letter. When I was working for Kenya Power, I don't know why I prayed that prayer. I told God, God, please allow me to be the one who will write the letter and say, now I want to leave Kenya Power. I, I, the office I used to work, I used to see letters, and they used to give us, to give them one year notice. That this is to inform me you'll be, you'll be uh, retiring at the end of the end, you are told the dates. I don't know why I didn't like the letters. I was telling God, I'm the one who applied for a job here. Please allow me to be the one who will write that and say that I'm going. I didn't know what I was praying for. But imagine God gave me the opportunity. And when I was leaving, I was so excited. I was saying, at least we joined so many of us. And after 24 years, I'm the one who is, some of them were sacked. Some of them died. Some of them were disciplined. Some of them were dismissed. Others were promoted. They went to another places. But here I came. God gave me that desire. I am the one who wrote. You should have seen me going to the managers, to my bosses, those whom had a relationship, and telling them, uh, I don't want you to see it in the circular. 
Because at the end of the month, I don't know whether they still that, everybody used to receive a sakura of the people who have died, the people who have been transferred, and the people who have resigned. So I didn't want, to see, want my friends to see it on the sakura that I have left. So I would go, and I would go and tell them, I have come here either to tell you or to confirm the rumor, just in case they have heard. <laughs> I got myself covered. And they were so happy, when, if, especially if they had not heard. Praise the Lord. And finally, the last resource all of us have is called relationships. I've talked about five. Relationships. God has given you relationships. All of us. You have a brother, you have a sister, you have a friend, you have a colleague, you have a boss, you have your pastor, you have your cell leader. These relationships. God lives in heaven. We live on earth. Whatever blessing that you be given, it will be delivered by a human being. Did you hear what just I said? And you don't know the human being that the Lord will use. You better honor and respect your neighbor. She could be or he could be your destiny helper to your next level. Honor relationships. Relationships with your parents. Relationships with your friends. Do not be the one who keeps on breaking relationships. I like what Solomon said. That uh, uh, faithfulness, friendship with an unfaithful man is like a broken tooth. That shall not be you. Because you, we are together, we are related, you just go and break the relationships. Relationship is a resource that God has given you. You better make use of it. And there are so many opportunities you could have lost just because you mismanaged the relationships that God has given you. You talk like you are on the top of the world. Excuse me. You need that man, the matter to man. He is the one who will carry you to that prestigious job of yours. Hallelujah. God lives in heaven. The earth he has given to the human beings, the ones I'm talking to this morning. We better honor each other. We better respect each other. You better give each other the attention. They could be the messenger you have been waiting all this time. So, remember, you are not the owner. You are the steward. The owner has gone. He can show up any time. And he will ask for the book of accounts. I pray that you be found faithful. I pray that you be found competent. You have increased. It is not where it was five years ago. We are growing because God is great. Shall we stand? Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you. Thank you for reminding us that we are stewards. And all of us have got all those things. We are alive, therefore this, we are at the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes, each one of us has got 24 hours without the resource of time. Help us to pay attention on how we spend our time and start investing that time to the glory of your name. We all have treasures. It may have different measure, but all of us, you have gifted us, oh God. You have given us treasures. You have given us talents. You have given us relationships. Cause each one of us to be good managers. I want to pray for my brothers and my sisters that Lord when you show up we will be found faithful and each one of us will hear those words well done good and faithful servants. May that become the desire of everyone listening to me this morning oh God. We honor you and we bless you in Jesus name. And maybe you are here. We have been talking about a manager who has gifted us with all these resources. His name is Jesus. And you have never met this Jesus. You have never given your life to Jesus. Or you had given him the life, but you went back. And this morning, you would want to rededicate your life. Are you there? We would love to pray for you even as we wind up the service. Are you there? If you lift up your hand, I'll see from where I am. And we are going to pray together. Are you there? You want to rededicate, rededicate your life to Jesus? Or you want to give your life to Jesus? That he may take care of you. Are you there? Are you there? I'm giving you time to reflect. If today the manager, if today the owner shows up, are you ready to give an account of your life? Or would you want to give your life to Jesus? 
that he may help you. Are you there? If you lift up your hands, see it and we will pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because you follow your word to perform it. And I pray that, Lord, as your sons and daughters reflect on the word they have heard today, you cause each one of them to arrange themselves. If there be some who don't know you, Lord, may that word that transforms life pursue them. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you.